Okay, uh, now we are going to discuss about the Turing machine as a transducer. And a transducer, a transducer means uh, uh, whenever we are giving an input, there would be a output generated. Like if we give a certain input, then it would process that input and get me an output. That means the transducer is a, basically a function. So, uh, and the Turing machine can work as a transducer. So that's what we are going to see here. And for a basic example, I mean for a very simple example, I'm taking once complement. And once complement means we know, all know that the respective changes in the ones and zeros. Like zeros are converted to ones, ones are converted to zeros. It's simple as that. And uh, we all know uh, the input, if, if the input is given like one zero, one double zero, then the output would be zero, one zero, double one. And Turing machine is going to do this operation. So basically we are here in the start state QS and we are going to encounter any number of zeros and any number of ones i mean if zeros we are going to convert them as ones if ones we are going to convert them as zeros and we are going to move right and while moving right i mean uh, we could have just stopped it here because that's the job i mean converting ones and zeros so but we are not going to do that i mean we are going to uh, re refine this uh, operation so that uh, the pointer which is uh, at the beginning of this input is on the leftmost side and after generating the output it should also be on the leftmost side of the output and for that we need to do a few steps ahead which is which is added here I mean it's just basically the movement of the pointer um, the main function that is the ones and zeros are done here that is if we are encountering a zero we are converting it to a one and we are moving right and if we are encountering a one we are converting it to zero and moving right that is the whole I mean that is the main thing we are uh, concerned about the next thing is just moving the pointer back to the leftmost position of the string that is uh, to do that after after we are done here and then what we are saying is if we are encountering a blank I mean after moving right uh, we are going to the rightmost end of the input and after that we are going to encounter blank and after if we, that the first blank we encounter we are going to next step because we are remembering that first blank has been encountered and keeping it as a blank that is we are not doing anything and then we start moving left and while moving left we will encounter all the zeros and all the ones that we had changed before so if while we are encountering them we are not going to do any kind of operation there we are going to simply leave them as it is that is zeros if we are encountering zeros we are leaving them as zeros and we are moving left if we are encountering ones we are keeping them as ones and we are moving left because we don't want to change anything because we already changed the input that is zeros to ones and ones to zeros so that's the just we are just encountering them because we are moving left and uh, after moving to the leftmost position that is in the, the the first blank is encountered again the leftmost blank uh, then if we are encountering the first blank again on the left side then we are keeping that as a blank because we are not going to do anything and then just move one step right that is if we are here that is here is a blank uh, the, the point input uh, so the output pointer is now here on the leftmost blank here and just, we are just going to move one step right so that the pointer is here and the person who is reading the output can read from the conven uh, read uh, at his own convenience because people i mean humans uh, we uh, read the strings from left to right that's why we are just changing the pointer to the leftmost position from uh, if we don't do this the pointer would have been just at, sitting at the rightmost position and then the person would have to again change it i mean uh, reverse the string and then process it so instead of doing that we are just doing this inherently here so the pointer is now on the leftmost blank and then if we are encountering that blank keeping it as a blank and then just move one step right that is the pointer is now pointing to zero and that is the leading us to the QF or the final or halting state that means the Turing machine is going to stop here and our job is done that's the Turing machine as a transducer keeping one's complement as an example so in the next coming example we will discuss the two's complement and then we will uh, see how Turing machine can be uh, used to add two numbers then Turing machine would be used as a copier and then we would after the after doing these two examples we would go to non-halting Turing machines that is uh, the property of Turing machine where Turing machines won't halt that is keep on going in an infinite loop so that is also an interesting thing so we will discuss that in later part thank you